hi everyone today in this video let us discuss drugs used for the treatment of bph what is bph bph is the benign prostatic hyperplasia where we can observe few of the symptoms in the patients such as increased urinary urgency so the patient may have increased urinary frequency and urgency to urinate but at the same time there is a weak stream of the urine resulting in the decreased urinary volume so in such patients the urinary frequency is increased but urinary volume is reduced resulting in the decreased urinary flow and this is one of the avoiding problem where the patient cannot store the urine as well as cannot empty the bladder completely in such conditions we can use so many types of drugs such as terazosin tamsulosin alfujosin finasteride tadalafil in this way so many types of drugs are available for the treatment of bph but all these drugs are not working in a similar way few of the drugs are going to increase the urinary flow by relaxing smooth muscles at the bladder and urethra and few of the drugs are going to reduce the prostate size so that they can reduce the urinary frequency particularly drugs acting on the hormones are going to reduce the prostate size so that they can reduce the urgency to urinate in this way these drugs may differ by how they are going to relieve the symptoms in the bph the drugs which increase the urinary flow are particularly used to treat mild to moderate symptoms of bph whereas those drugs which are going to reduce the prostate size are particularly used to relieve the severe symptoms of bph particularly associated with prostate enlargement and the difference between these drugs is that few of the drugs should not be given with the pde inhibitors phosphodiesterase inhibitors but another group of drugs are contraindicated with organic nitrates so even these drugs are indicated for the same purpose that is the treatment of bph but they are having different pharmacological effects and contraindications so today in this video let us see what are the different types of drugs used for the treatment of bph what are the important side effects and how they are going to be taken first of all let us see what is bph bph is the benign prostatic hyperplasia here the term benign indicates it is not that much harmful so it is not spreading to the other organs and prostatic hyperplasia which indicates increased growth of the prostate tissue which results in few of the symptoms such as decreased urinary volume and increased urinary frequency so bph is one of the voiding disorder where the patient cannot store the urine within the bladder at the same time they cannot empty the bladder completely so in these patients we can observe some leaky urine the urine cannot be stored and in few of the patients we can observe enlargement of the prostate because of this prostate enlargement urethral flow is going to be blocked so that urine cannot be passed out even by contraction of the bladder and particularly this prostate enlargement is observed in the elders above 50 years and in those elders with age greater than 80 years the prostate enlargement is more pronounced with enhanced symptoms of bph that's why bph can also be known as benign prostatic hypertrophy the enlargement of the prostate tissue resulting in decreased urinary volume and increased urinary frequency so in such conditions we can use few other drugs which are going to increase the urinary flow we can use another group of drugs which are going to reduce the prostate size particularly we have three category of drugs which are indicated for the treatment of bph first one is the alpha 1 blockers and second group is the pde inhibitors third one is 5 alpha reductase inhibitors the alpha 1 blockers can be easily identified by the suffix osin so we have the drugs like terazosin doxazosin alfujosin tamsulosin psilocin all these are alpha 1 blockers similarly pd inhibitors can be recognized by the suffix afil we have one of the drug tadalafil which is indicated for the treatment of bph finally 5 alpha reductase inhibitors can be identified by the suffix steroide because these are acting on the steroidal hormones they are having the suffix steroid we have the drugs like finasteride and jutasteride 
So these are the three groups of drugs which are indicated for the treatment of BPH. Now let us go one by one and let us see what are the important side effects and how they are going to be taken. Let us start with the alpha 1 blockers. These are also called as select 2 alpha 1 blockers because alpha receptors are of two types alpha 1 and alpha 2. Here these drugs are selectively blocking the alpha 1 receptors. These alpha 1 receptors are widely distributed on many of the smooth muscles and particularly with the urinary system they are specifically expressed at the bladder neck and base and they are also expressed on the urethral smooth muscle where they are responsible for contraction of the bladder neck and urethra. But the main location of these alpha 1 receptors is on the blood vessels where they are responsible for vasoconstriction. Now select two alpha 1 blockers like terazosin, doxazosin, these two drugs can block the alpha 1 receptors present at different locations. But since alpha 1 receptors are mainly located on the blood vessels, they can produce vasodilatation. That's why these drugs are introduced as antihypertensives to treat essential hypertension. But later, these drugs are also indicated for the treatment of BPH, where they can relieve the symptoms of BPH by increasing the smooth muscle relaxation and increase the urinary flow. We have another drug alfajosin, which is but it is mainly indicated for the treatment of BPH. Among the alpha 1 receptors, another subtype is present that is alpha 1A receptors. These alpha 1A receptors are mainly located on the urinary system, particularly at the bladder, neck, and urethra, where they are again responsible for contraction of the smooth muscle. Few other drugs like tamsulosine, psilodosine, these two drugs are selectively blocking alpha 1A subtype receptors, thereby, they can produce relaxation of the bladder, neck and urethra, thereby they can increase the urinary flow as well as they can reduce the urinary agency. So these two drugs are somewhat more selective for the treatment of BPH. But we can identify some difference between selective alpha 1 blockers and alpha 1A subtype receptor blockers. We can observe two suffix, one is josin and another one is osin. The suffix josin is present in selective alpha 1 blockers such as terajosin, doxazosin, alfajosin. These drugs are selectively blocking alpha 1 receptors. So they are alpha 1 blockers but they are not acting on alpha 1 subtype. That means they are not differentiating the subtype receptors such as alpha 1a, alpha 1b and alpha 1d. On the other hand, the drugs which are having the suffix osin such as tamsulosin, psilodosin, these drugs are selectively blocking alpha 1a subtype receptors. So they are somewhat more selective towards the urinary system and they are selectively relieve the symptoms of BPH. That's why these drugs are somewhat less hypotensive and they are the first line drugs in the treatment of BPH. These selective alpha blockers can produce various side effects such as postural hypotension which is more pronounced with the drugs like terazosin and doxazosin and they can also produce some dizziness, confusion, even they can induce a syncope because of postural hypotension. Drugs like terazosin and doxazosin can produce more intense postural hypotension compared with select 2 alpha 1a blockers. That's why these drugs should be given at bedtime in order to reduce any postural hypotension. On the other hand, drugs like alfajosin and tamsulosin, these drugs can be given after a meal, particularly the first meal of the day, because these drugs are not producing significant postural hypotension. So there is no need to give these drugs at bedtime, but they can be taken at the first meal of the day and the same time should be maintained throughout the therapy in order to produce better therapeutic effects. Similarly, terazosin and doxazosin should not be combined with PDE inhibitors, fast food estrays, 5 inhibitors such as tadalafil, sildenafil, vadinafil and avanafil because these drugs produce vasodilatation which is more pronounced with terazosin and doxazosin. So PDE5 inhibitor should not be combined with terazosin and doxazosin. Now let us see the second group of drugs PDE inhibitors for the treatment of BPH. PDE5 inhibitors are particularly used for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. So in those men who are having erectile dysfunction along with the symptoms of BPH resulting in voiding problems. In such conditions, we can give the PDE5 inhibitors such as tadalafil. 
but since tadalafil acts on the erectile tissue it can produce one of the condition priapism which is a condition of prolonged erection and painful erection that can be observed with pd5 inhibitors similarly this drug should not be combined with organic nitrates because this combination can produce some significant hypotension within the patients which may lead to the coma and death of the patient so drugs like nitroglycerin isosorbate dinitrate and isosorbate mononitrate should not be combined with pd5 inhibitors third group of drugs are the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors testosterone is one of the hormone which is going to be converted into dihydrotestosterone by 5 alpha reductase enzyme this dht dihydrotestosterone is the active form of the testosterone which can act on the prostate tissue such that it can produce prostate enlargement now we have 5 alpha reductase inhibitors which can block the activity of this enzyme thereby they can inhibit the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone by the reduced levels of dht the prostate size can be reduced resulting in the decreased prostate size that's why 5 alpha reductase inhibitors can reduce the prostate size so they are preferred in those patients with enlarged prostate where they can increase the urinary flow by reducing the size of the prostate gland so drugs like finasteride and jutasteride are the drugs which are classified as 5 alpha reductase inhibitors these drugs should be handled very safely particularly they should not be in contact with the pregnant woman since 5 alpha reductase inhibitors can produce some toxicity to the male fetus they should not be in direct contact with the pregnant woman and in case of any accidental contact with this drug the hand should be thoroughly washed in order to avoid any toxicity to the male fetus similarly these drugs can reduce the prostate specific antigen levels so when the psa test is going to be done low levels can be detected in the test which may mask the development of prostate cancer so in those patients who are taking finasteride and jutasteride the prostate cancer screening may be not optimal so after stopping of the dose again psa test should be done in order to check any development of prostate cancer these drugs can produce few of the side effects such as loss of libido decreased sexual desire and they can also produce some ejaculation disorders thereby they can produce some importance in the patients now let us the combination therapy in order to produce better efficacy we can use combination therapy here alpha 1 blockers can be combined with 5 alpha reductase inhibitors one of the widely used combination is that tamsulosin can be combined with finasteride so these are the various drugs which are indicated for the treatment of bph few of the drugs are going to increase the urinary flow so selecto alpha 1 blockers are particularly increase the urinary flow by relaxing the bladder and urethral passes thereby they can increase the urinary flow and decrease the urinary frequency pd5 inhibitors can reduce the symptoms of bph as well as they can reduce the erectile dysfunction and finally 5 alpha reductase inhibitors can reduce the prostate size thereby they can increase the urethral pathway so that urinary flow is going to be increased as well as urinary frequency is reduced but these drugs are preferred in those patients with severe symptoms of the bph so that's all about the drugs used for the treatment of bph hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video